Good morning and welcome to St. John Worship Online Service. Uh, today is the fourth Sunday in Pentecost. And uh, the Sundays after Pentecost are green because we focus on growth in the church and in our congregation. We are learning to grow in different and various ways. Um, I was just informed this morning that we will have 32 children participating in Vacation Bible School this summer, and it'll be done all online. And we're all looking forward to seeing how that's gonna happen and how we can grow as we continue this ministry of St. John to people all over the state. Uh, we will continue worshiping as a uh, dispersed community, and we are live streaming, and hopefully that will continue to work. Uh, I pray that all the technical issues will slowly disappear. Uh, the people present this morning are the worship leaders. And when we do actually start, uh, it'll be a slow start because we want to continue to practice safe social distancing. This week, our whole state had to take a step back. And that's a good thing because we have to protect the most vulnerable in our community. Please remember to check your email regularly. If you're not getting MailChimp, let the office know. It just means that MailChimp has decided to ignore you since you had ignored it in the past. Uh, we also try and use direct email, so please check your email. If you've changed your email, let us know. Uh, those who worship uh, live will be receiving uh, communion in a convention-style cup and wafer. It's a self-contained wafer with grape juice. Um, at home, you're invited to worship as normally as possible in your living room or at your kitchen table. Say the congregation responses out loud. Sing as loud as you'd like. Make sure you have bread and some wine and grape juice with you so that you can commune each other using the words given for you and shed for you. Remember that even though we're not together, we are still the body of Christ worshiping together. So let us begin with our invocation. Please stand as you are able. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your own, crea your own good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes to us from Jeremiah 28. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who proceed, preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied of war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Our psalms will be read responsively. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. 
and you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a co covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festive, festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Our second reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 6. Do not let sin exercise domain in your mortal bodies, to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no domain over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then, should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either sin, which, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you are entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. But for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of these things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose the reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Matthew chapter 10 is all about discipleship. Jesus commissions the 12 disciples. He empowers them to cure the sick, drive out evil spirits, sends them out to proclaim and to live out the coming kingdom of God. And then he receives them back with warnings of coming persecutions and trials, he tells them who to fear, who to ignore, reminds them 
that the gospel sparks division, calls them to take up their cross, and then promises them the reward of their faithfulness. This morning comes the even. After all the stark and dramatic and realistic language of chapter 10, it's a bit anticlimactic. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Beautiful, fine, I can understand that. Not only will the faithful disciples be rewarded, but those who welcome them will be included in God's indulgence. But then it continues. Whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name or in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Wow. Really? That's all it takes? Giving someone a cup of cold water? Not that offering was welcome, uh, but that's a challenge. And you have to look seriously. Something as small as a cup of water offered up, that's all it takes to secure one's reward? Yeah, that's it. But this whole chapter, it isn't about what it takes to be a disciple, but rather simply describing actually what it means to be a disciple. Empowerment, yes. Struggle, yes. Welcome, rejection, division, persecution, the call of faithfulness. All these things are part and parcel of being a disciple of Jesus then and now. But maybe this talk of reward isn't about how one earns reward, but rather about recognizing the rewards, the blessings that are already showered upon the disciples by God. Notice that at this point, Jesus isn't actually talking about what the disciples are supposed to do. He's talking about those who welcome them. The little ones are the very disciples that Jesus has commissioned and sent out. And those who welcome them would normally be considered terribly important. They are servants to the apostles, helpers, facilitators. And these gestures might even be as small as giving a cup of water are part of the mission, are drawn into the mission of the disciples and in turn the mission of Jesus. In other words, discipleship doesn't have to be heroic. A cup of cold water counts. And once you realize this, then you can quickly add to the list of things that are discipleship. Smiling at someone. Smiling at a stranger when we see, instead of ignoring them. Granted, it's a little bit hard in today's world to see a smile because most people are supposed to be masked. But it goes even further. Offering a shoulder or sitting with someone who's crying to comfort someone who's grieving, to welcoming the new kid at school or at vacation Bible school, writing a letter to someone who's shut in, thanking a law officer for their service, recognizing somebody in uniform, and just saying thank you. Buying school supplies for the teacher whose budget has just been cut. These are things that are giving a cup of water to the least of these. And the list goes on and on and on. It doesn't have to stop there. They sound like small gestures except that in the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as a small gesture when it's done in faith. Each and every act of kindness and generosity has impact well beyond what you imagined. Indeed, Jesus' words imply, no, they do more than imply, they state directly that no act of generosity or kindness will be forgotten by him or by God. 
It's amazing that our smallest acts of kindness and generosity reverberate with cosmic significance. You may never know the difference your fateful actions may have. I've shared this story before, and I'm going to share it again. I can, that, that when I was on internship, I was up on the flat part of Montana. Not the one with the beautiful mountains and glacier park. No, no. I was on the part next to North Dakota, which was very flat. And uh, as the intern, I had to make a special effort to do youth ministry. I had to get to the kids and call the kids who lived outside of town. The big city of Glendive, population 8,000. And still we had kids out in the, outside in the ranches in um, Dawson County, Montana, to try and get them to participate in church activities. Now, my efforts weren't my own. They were part of the youth ministry of the church. They were, and I, my, my, they, that was part of my portfolio when I was there. And I was just checking a box. I was doing the work that I was expected to do. I didn't think it was anything special. Oftentimes, we just had pizza and watched a movie. No big deal. Just hanging out on Wednesday nights and sometimes on Friday nights. At the end of the year, when Allie uh, and I were married and we uh, traveled back to Glendive to have the going away party back to seminary, which is in Minnesota, at the end of that year, several parents came up and told me how important and how much effort that, 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 that little effort that I had put in had meant to their kids. One had actually struggled with depression and suicide. And the bright spot in her life was coming to hang out at church. Her mom said it saved her life. She felt like she was wanted, like she was part of something larger. And I knew none of this during the whole year. I was a little bit oblivious. I was a new, I was a student. I was simply trying to check the boxes that I needed to check so that I could get to the end of my internship year. You have the opportunity to be Jesus' disciples, to make a difference in the world each and every day, wherever you might be. That opportunity might be right in front of you this week. You're not called to be heroic disciples, but you are called to discipleship, and the kind of discipleship that is characterized by what I call everyday life, ordinary everyday life, both in the sense of the word ordinary, mundane, simple, but also in the sense of every day. There is no day off for discipleship, for being nice, for being a neighbor. Jesus commissions and empowers us all to be everyday disciples, armed with the courage and compassion of Christ, we go out believing every day that God is at work in and through all we do, and that even the smallest act of kindness and generosity, offering a cold cup of water, will change this world. But keep in mind, saving the world is not our responsibility. That belongs to God and God's promises. And we trust that God has care for the whole world, but that God empowers us to participate in God's work. We are God's hands. We participate in God's kingdom by caring for the people we find in our little corner of the world. You don't have to go to Madagascar. You don't have to go to South Africa. I can promise you that even the smallest acts of kindness and generosity done in faith are remembered. Putting on a mask may not seem like much, but it does have significance, and it makes a difference beyond what you can see. It is an act of kindness and generosity done in the name of Christ, and it reverberates out. 
we gather in God's love and blessing and saving of this world. We are part of it. We are gathered in. We are disciples. This is the way the body of Christ works. God's promise, God's commission creates a new reality of hope, generosity, and possibility. A new reality that Jesus calls the kingdom of heaven now. And that good news is we get to be a part of it. Amen. Let us confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered and was conscious high, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into the unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts equal to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and to be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion and wisdom. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially those afflicted with this virus, those threatened by this virus, and those trapped in their homes or care centers by this virus. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial Protect them. Protect the migrants in detention centers. Watch over us all. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the part of worship service when the usher normally passes the offering plate to gather your tithes and offerings. And we sent people out this week to knock on your door. No, we didn't do that. Uh, there's no such thing as an online usher. So we're asking you and encouraging you to continue your giving. You can go to the church website and use the PayPal option with your debit or credit card. You can also check with your bank and see if they will send up, help you set up a recurring contribution to the church for you. So please remember that it is by your donations and your offerings and your tithes that we can help people in our community and continue the ministry of St. John here in Angleton. I guess we do the operatory tactical. <laughs> or offering special music. Sorry. Offering special music. Oh. 
God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are the signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and song. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all time and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which it was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen friends of jesus come to the table receive your nourishment for your journey
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Thanks be to God.